the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Welcome to this CUBE Conversation. I'm Lisa Martin, and I'm joined by two guests from Ivanti today. Please welcome its president, Jeff Abbott, and its chief product officer, Nayaki Nayar. Jeff and Nayaki, it's so great to talk to you today. Pleasure to speak to you, Lisa. Pleasure to be here, Lisa. Look forward to this. Me too. So Jeff, let's start with you. Transformation, you got some big news that you're going to be sharing and breaking through the CUBE Conversation today, which we're going to dig into, but there's been a lot of transformation at the top at Ivanti. You're new. Tell me about that and what's the shakeup that's been going on there to really drive this company forward? Yeah, uh, we have uh, got a lot of transformation going on, Lisa, and it's been uh, an exciting ride for the first six months of my tenure at Ivanti. I came in in January as president along with our, our new CEO, who has been chairman, Jim Shaper. And when Jim and I started talking about Avanti last fall, uh, the, the challenges were pretty clear. Uh, it's a company that's had uh, outstanding employees, fantastic customers, and a real heritage of innovation. But they had leveled off a little bit, and uh, uh, the idea behind the new executive team was to bring in a team of veterans to take it to the next level, really to grow to a billion dollars and beyond, both organically and through acquisition. So, you're right, we brought in a, a fantastic team of veterans, people that Jim and I have both worked with. Uh, Angie Gunter, new chief marketing officer, Mary Trick, uh, new chief customer officer. We recently hired Nayaki Nayar, who's with us today, our chief product officer. John Flavin, the head of our industry business unit, uh, and a, a host of others that have all come in with a, a single mission to take Ivanti to the next level. So Nayaki, let's dig into Ivanti's vision. A lot of change, a lot of momentum, I imagine, with that change, but what's your vision? So uh, let's take a step back, uh, Lisa, and you look at what I call Ivanti's position of strength. And when you look at the entire portfolio Ivanti has, one of the key strengths Ivanti has is its ability to discover, secure, manage, and service the endpoints, right? And if you look at the entire uh, marketplace, there is no vendor in the market. Today, most of the UEM vendors don't have service management, service management don't have UEM. Our ability, Ivanti's ability to do this end-to-end -end management of endpoints all the way from discovery to security to uh, service management is what our key strength is. That's a competitive advantage. Uh, bringing these three pillars together under one umbrella and having a holistic story, especially in this day and age of COVID and post-COVID, where everyone is trying to manage those endpoints, secure those endpoints, and have almost a seamless experience as remote becomes the next normal going forward for every enterprise, Lisa. Yeah, the next normal. Well, there's data scatter, there's device scatter, and it's now almost like, you know, so many people working from home overnight a few months ago that now sort of have almost a more, almost a relationship with our devices because they're our lifeline. So for an organization to be able to understand where all those devices are, people are, you know, now working from home. But as you shared, Nayaki, with me the other day, there's some Gartner data that demonstrates that 3.6% of the workforce before COVID was working from home. It might be 10x that post-COVID. So the amount of device scatter and data scatter and need to secure, that challenge is even going up. So how does Ivanti help? How do you solve that challenge? So, so Lisa, if you put yourself in any large enterprise and organization that is dealing with this post-COVID or addressing the needs of a remote worker, uh, the remote workers are growing through, I would say, explosive growth where they used to be like single digits, 3%, 4% before COVID. And now uh, during COVID and after COVID, it's probably going to be, I would say, 30, 40% of remote workers that every enterprise has to now provide that service, the seamless service experience as they are working from home, they could be on the move. So providing that seamless experience is, I would say, number one priority and a key challenge for, for every enterprise. So what we are going to be releasing and launching and announcing to the market 
given our position of strength in managing endpoints is how we help that seamless experience and what I call the ambient experience for an end user, independent of where they're working from. They could be working from home, they could be on the move or office. Which is critical these days. But before we dig into to the announcement, Jeff, I wanted to ask you some of the stats that I've been seeing in terms of the C-suite and the amount of decisions that the C-suite has had to make in the last four months has been more than over the last like five or so years. Talk to us a little bit about how your Ivanti got together this new C-suite to make the decision to announce what you're going to talk about today so quickly. Uh, no, that's a great point, and it, it's it's one that we had to, quite frankly, Lisa. The the market is demanding a hyper automation. It's demanding more uh, agnostic deployment. It it needs more flexibility in terms of the ability to to uh, uh, be self driven and and sense and and service without a whole lot of intervention. So we knew that when we came in as a new leadership team, the first thing we had to do was get sort of the the go to market strategy in order, which we did. We, we balanced the uh, kind of our direct sales strategy with our, our partner strategy. Uh, we made some changes in the marketing organization to a more contemporary content focused demand generation style. And we reset the company's focus on customer outcomes. And in so doing, we, we changed the mentality to success is measured by are we meeting our customers intended business goals? And that led us very quickly to say, listen, the unified IT message we've been using for the last few years has been great. And our customers have responded well to it. And we've acquired a lot of new customers with that message, but the game has changed. And as Naoki was uh, leading up to, the expectation has changed. Uh, the, the entire IT space is relatively mature, but the expectations and the pressure on that space has grown tremendously, as you pointed out, in the last few years. Just think of, uh, the number of, of devices we all now have to manage uh, as, a, as, as a company, and it's growing. And, and as Naoki will point out, if she discusses our launch, it's growing almost exponentially. So uh, we knew that we had to have a new product strategy. We had to take the unified IT message and start to think differently about how the IT leaders in the field and, and our various customers around the world, how their game has changed and sort of lean in to what they need in terms of automation, AI, bot technology, and so on. And that's what we're announcing with this, uh, with this latest release. All right, Nayaki, take it away. What are you announcing? Yeah, so what we are super excited about, uh, Lisa, is um, to Jeff's point, to handle this explosive growth, growth of devices, growth of data that is being generated from those devices, and also this explosive growth of remote workers. You know, the only way to handle this growth is through what we call automation. And we are taking that next advanced automation, that leapfrog strategy of what we call hyper automation, embedding that into our entire stack, into our uh, UEM endpoint management stack, into our security stack, and also service management to uh, help customers, what we call self-heal, discover all the devices continuously, uh, optimize the performance, optimize any configuration drifts, and proactively, predictively uh, remediate any issues, any issues that you see on, uh, on those devices, and get into a world of what we call self-healing autonomous edge, right? Where it's continuously detecting every issue uh, and being able to predictively and cognitively self-heal uh, that edge. And this is what we are launching is what we branded as Ivanti Neurons is the brand that uh, we are launching for these automation, these hyper automation bots that every company can deploy these hyper automation bots into their network that will constantly discover every device you have across your entire network, discover any performance issues, configuration drift issues, uh, security issues, vulnerabilities, anomalies, and really get into what we call self-feeling, self-securing, and providing a service experience that we are used to in our day-to-day -day life or in our consumer world, right? So that's what we are announcing. Super excited about uh, the overall launch, the fact that uh, every enterprise, every company, and it's not tied to any single vertical, Lisa, any 
vertical organization can uh, leverage these neurons and get that closer to self-healing of those devices that they have to now manage every organization that has to know. I know Ivanti has a lot of strengths in several verticals, uh, one of them being healthcare. And I can imagine right now, the last five months, the hyper uh, status that every hospital and clinic is in. I'm curious though about the name. Jeff, talk to me about in this new and next normal that we're living in, neurons. What does that mean? And what does it mean to your customers? Yeah, great question. And I know this uh, this will uh, resonate with you, Lisa, as an accomplished biologist. Uh, what well, the idea is is uh, with what we're providing and what we're launching with neurons. There's a there's a sense of of hyperscale hyper automation, like the synapse in your brain handles so much information at once. So we wanted to personalize the launch of these solutions. Uh, when when you see the announcement next week, you'll see a series of products across uh, the spectrum of Avanti solutions: the ITSM, endpoint management, security, and so on. And we address in each of those areas. Uh, the self-sensing, self-healing, self-servicing of each of those business processes. So like your synapse or your neurons in your brain, uh, there'll be a lot of uh, super fast automation, super fast sensing of challenges and addressing those challenges. And that's why we went with neurons. It was actually a pretty fun contest in the company. And uh, uh, we, we really believe neurons will connect with our, with our target market. I love it. And the biologist part of me is going, ah, that makes sense. So Naoki, over to you. In, in terms of that connectivity perspective, there's so many disparate data sources out there. It's only growing. And, and Jeff, you kind of mentioned this. How can like one of your existing 25,000 customers use deploy this on top of their existing infrastructure to start connecting data sources that they may not even know they can connect or that they may not know does it make even sense to connect them? Yeah, so, so the beauty of uh, the entire neuron network is uh, it uses MQTT protocol, Lisa, which is uh, the protocol that immediately detects every device, be it uh, endpoint, desktops, laptops, mobile devices, or even I would say just an IoT devices that it automatically detects and senses if there is anything happening on those devices, any any kind of predicts if there's any issue that may happen, like I said, performance issues, configuration different issues, security issues, and pulls that data in real time. The beauty of this is the speed at which it pulls this data. I have seen customers who can deploy this across their entire network around the world, and within seconds, it's able to pull the data um, into a central console and give, a, I would say, a full 360 view of every device you have, every uh, user that's using those devices, all the applications that are running on those devices and the services that are being delivered to those devices. So just the power of being able to pull that much data in seconds and provide that 360 view of what we call a neuron workspace for any IT organization to have that full 360 view and detect and predict if there's any issue and almost like get into a self-healing remediate it before it interrupts your productivity or interrupts your uh, uh, any service disruption. So I think you were trying to say something. Go ahead. I was just going to add to that, Naoki, and, and uh, you asked this or made this point, Lisa. Uh, Naoki and I are speaking to the healthcare industry uh, almost every day. We are uh, very in tune with the challenges they're experiencing, obviously, with what's happening right now around the world. Uh, and as, as Naoki is describing, this, the neurons we intend to be a very seamless improvement to their existing IT uh, processes and so on. In fact, when I describe this to some of the hospitals I've been speaking to and, and certainly the IT staff and, and leaders within, uh, they are fascinated and very excited about what we're describing because if you think about it, um, you know, uh, IT challenges down at the device level in the healthcare industry can be life critical. And they need to solve those uh, IT challenges very fast. They need to know when their new endpoints are online. They need to know when they need servicing. They need to know when the software needs patching. We're not talking about uh, you know, just being on hold and being frustrated if you're having an IT challenge. We're talking about life and death. So uh, neurons is absolutely what the healthcare industry is asking for in terms of self-healing, uh, self-sensing, self-securing, and so on. They need those attributes in their business model now uh, definitely more than ever. Absolutely they do. And so Nayaki, talking to customers, 
in healthcare and whatnot, I can see this being um, a great tool for the IT analyst, but also maybe even helping the IT analyst and business users have better relationships that overall help drive a business forward. Yeah. So you, you put yourself in, in an end user or a line of business. Uh, they expect, I mean, especially in, in this day and age of post, uh, post-COVID, uh, Lisa, they expect a consumer grade experience to be delivered to them. You know, they expect their service provider uh, to know exactly where they're working from, what devices they have, uh, how all those devices are, are not just secure, but understands the preferences I need as an individual and provides that service experience to me. So, I mean, that I would say a close tie in between what the business wants, the end users in those lines of business want and how IT or any service organization can provide that service to employees, customers and consumers is what really neurons I would really uh, helps us get closer and closer to the consumer grade experience that we all are used to in our day to day life. And and to Jeff's point, in addition to uh, healthcare, which is a strong industry vertical for us, uh, some other industries, uh, retail is another big industry that we are very strong in, uh, Lisa and also uh, supply chain, rugged devices in a warehouse. So it really gives us a huge expansion opportunity beyond just managing uh, the IT devices or endpoints to also managing the IoT devices by industry vertical in those segments where we already have a very, very strong foothold because of the technology that we have that powers this whole thing in the back end. And we're seeing some of the numbers of 40 plus billion connected devices in the next few years. So Jeff, let's end this with you. I know there's more coming, but you probably have a great partnership suite that you're working with to enable this. Talk to us a little bit about the partners and then what's next. Yeah, no, great point, Lisa. And uh, uh, I I come from a heritage of companies that have leveraged uh, partners and we continue to grow our partner network. We believe strongly in the strength of the extended ecosystem, solution partners, delivery partners, global systems integrators, uh, they all have a role in Neurons. And we're excited to continue to provide the platform for mutual growth between us and those partners. And what's really important is these are companies that our customers really love as well. So we're going to continue to, in some cases, tie our solutions together. In some cases, uh, extend our services organization through partners. uh, And in uh, some cases, we'll actually uh, service our customers through our channel partner network. We actually went through a a little bit of a rationalization to really uh, zero in on our most strategic partners. We've done that. We finished that in the first six months of coming on board. And now we are uh, hitting the gas pedal and going full speed to market with a great group of partners. And again, you'll see that ecosystem more and more as part of our strategy. Excellent. So Neurons announced. What's next? Well, there's quite a bit behind neurons, so it will take us uh, uh, probably into at least 2021 getting all the solutions launched and getting them uh, ingrained with our customers out there. Well, we fully intend to continue to innovate. And if there's one thing I leave you with, Lisa, it's that uh, that's our our big announcement more than anything. I mean, Ivanti's had a history of innovation. It's a company that uh, practically invented patching uh, uh, and keeping uh, all of the devices up to speed on, on uh, the latest vi- virus protection software and so on. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, you know, legacy companies within our footprint that are now completely tied together and under the Neuron strategy, under Naoki's leadership, we intend to, to put innovation out into the marketplace quarter after quarter after quarter. But Neurons for now will keep us quite busy. So we're very excited. Well, congratulations on that. Ivanti, innovation, hyper automation. Jeff Nayaki, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining me on theCUBE today. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching a CUBE Conversation.